So I never would have planned to have started a new uh, video series with a bike unboxing. It really would have preferred it to have been like a ride and some actual cycling, right? But uh, for those of you who read my blog, you'll know that the last month or so has been like a total nightmare for me trying to get this thing going. So we are where we are. So I guess we'll just get on with it. My name's Neil. I'm a cyclist who has recently returned to long distance cycling. Up until about three years ago, I was into mountain biking, endurance mountain biking, ITTs, bike packing, all that type of stuff. In the last year or so, I've kind of come back. Um, and since then, I've actually been really enjoying riding on the road. So with that in mind, I've done a number of Audaxes over the summer. Um, it's November now. Um, October saw the start of a new season, um, my first full season. Now, I'm not going to get into what uh, rondoneering is all about, but suffice to say, it's uh, long distance cycling, normally in a loop. Um, uh, with a number of predefined control points along the way. So over the next year or so, uh, I don't know, maybe possibly longer, I'm going to be documenting uh, what I get up to whilst I'm going for a number of different awards that you can earn over a season. Now this is going to be done via a mixture of vlogs like this one and written blog posts. So the three uh, awards that I'm going for, by the way, are a full SR series to, to achieve uh, Super Rondoneer status. The Rondoneer around the round the year, which is one 200k or longer ride every month for 12 consecutive months. And the last one, the big one, the one that I really see is that is the big challenge in this, the uh, Rondoneer 5000 which is 5,000 kilometers worth of uh, ODAX uh, rides. I think that one is actually gonna be pretty challenging. Um, and, you know, look, to be fair, I think that one might not be something I achieve, but I really wanted to go for something that was gonna be tricky um, and that would actually really challenge me. So without further ado, uh, let's get into uh, unboxing this new bike. So what I've gone for here is a uh, Ribble um, CGR TI. Um, I've always liked steel frames, uh, but this time around I just kind of wanted something that was a little bit lighter. Um, I've actually been using uh, the Singular Kite, which you can see here, um, for quite a while now. I've probably had this maybe four or five years. I've used it for a number of different uh, brevets over the summer. I always use it as my commuting bike. And, um, you know, look, honestly, I, I love this bike, but it ain't light. So I wanted to try something else. This is actually my first titanium bike, so hopefully it won't disappoint. Okay, so if this was a small frame. I was right on the edge of uh, being five foot nine of the top end of the small frame or the very bottom end of the medium frame. Ribble advised me that uh, they would sort of generally go with putting people on the smallest frame they could, which, you know, I was happy to take their advice on that. But I guess it would give me a, a little bit of extra seat post as well compared to maybe the kite, which would be a good thing as um, I struggled to get my big bike packing saddlebag on the back of that bike. I've gone with a longer stem as well. It's a hundred mil stem on that. I decided to go with the mud guards, uh, you know. So I instantly make friends on uh, Odax by fitting mud guards, right? But, you know, seriously, uh, at 3 a.m. when it's sheeting it down the rain, the last thing you want is all that extra spray in your face. So yeah, decided to go with mud guards, so it'd be a good idea. Oh, 
All right, let's see what this is. I'm guessing this is probably sea post and saddle. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> frame has a really nice finish on it all these welds look quite nice neat and tidy so we've got a carbon fork here with all the internal routing um, and then internal routing through the frame as well um, I'm kind of not exactly a huge fan of internal routing I mean on one hand it looks nice and tidy on the other hand there's a certain classic look to uh, cables down a frame, right? But, you know, I'm not uh, too bothered by that. It will make things a little bit easier with frame bags and such that um, there'll be no cabling to worry about. I believe as well that there should have been some internal routing for a dynamo. I do have a dynamo wheel that I will be having built up. In fact, I will have a new set of wheels arriving, some 46 millimeter deep section carbon from light bicycle um, but unfortunately there were a couple of issues with uh, their supplies of hubs at this point so that's a little bit delayed i guess i'm gonna need to tighten up that seat post right <laughs> see nice shiny drivetrain as well won't, won't last for long um, i've got a little bit of work to do on this bike i've got to put on some uh, the pedals of course i've got a nice set of xtrs to go on there um i'm almost certainly going to end up yeah swapping on my sdg bell air i've got a new one of those to go on um handlebars are almost certainly going to come off as well probably either going to go with a salsa wood chipper or the salsa uh cow chipper or one of each uh not sure which one i'm going to go with yet Probably the cow chipper actually, I'm thinking. Um, Stem-wise as well, I've got a zip 105 mil riser stem to come on here. Um, just to give myself a little bit of extra height because I know it's gonna be a significant amount of hours spent on this bike. So raising up the front end a bit, I think it could be good for comfort. <laughs> There we go. So shifting doesn't seem particularly great at this point. I guess that's just some adjustment. So I guess something that I've already decided is kind of a pain in the ass is the Needing a tool to do the wheels. Probably going to end up replacing 12 mil through axles that come with it with quick release version. All right, so there it is with my saddle, pedals, and some bottle cages on. Uh, I know the orange cage is not going to be to everyone's taste. The color is going to get picked up again in, in terms of the new bars when I put those on. Having sat on the bike for a bit, yeah, not really happy with the handlebars. I knew that was probably going to be the case but uh, they just don't feel comfortable for me. I mean, I'm used to a flared bar, but these feel, these don't even feel straight to me. These feel like they actually curl inwards. I think as well, I'm gonna definitely be changing up the stem into the riser stem. Um, particularly since I kind of managed to get the seat post in where I reckon is about the right height without actually riding. It kind of feels a little bit weird to me, like I'm leaning down into the bars too much. But uh, that's because I'm not really used to an aggressive position. So, yeah, uh, these were all things that I was pretty sure were going to be things I wasn't happy with initially. But that, that's totally fine. Okay, well, uh, I think we'll wrap this one up for now. Um, I'll certainly do another run through of the bike once it's kind of, once I've given it a few test rides, once I've uh, done a little bit more with getting it to exactly how I want it. But, yeah. I guess next video will be uh, next week's ride, the Monmouth and Meander 200. I'll see you then.